you have to allow yourself to place others above yourself. For if you develop a superior but false estimation of yourself, you will not be able to effectively discharge your responsibilities as a physician. Aid. Aid in general welfare of the community. Again, this is a commitment of something greater than ourselves. You see, when we were born, God entrusted us with certain talents. And we must utilize such talents with distinction whilst on earth and fulfill that objective. No two individuals are alike. Not even identical twins have the same DNA makeup. They do not have the same fingerprint. Therefore, you are an original, not a photocopy of anybody. And you need to excel in your own space. It does not matter where you come from. It is the ability, especially today. We live in a very different environment. Before, people used to conquer territory and things using weapons of mass destruction. Today, we use information to conquer. And information is readily available. In fact, at a certain point in time, there was scarcity of information where the media was the one who would send some stones at the critical glass of secret powers so that they'll get a sensation. Today, the reverse is true. They got so much information that you can hardly make sense of all the information that's available to you. But throughout, you need to take your mental flight into a different environment as you seek to be the best that you can be as far as the practice of medicine is concerned. Cooperation. The spirit of cooperation is probably one of the, the more difficult components in a profession made up of overachievers. If you help your fellow student to learn a difficult concept, you are helping that person learn what will help them someday to care for a patient and possibly save a life. Sometimes in class, you believe that you're the best in class, and you want to always be the A student, and you want to be better than everybody else. And so, those who probably has not grasped a concept as quickly as you have, you have a strategic advantage when you get to the exam. But this is not the way forward for a university. Because you must organize yourselves into that integrated whole. In that way, you create the better conditions for securing a more solid control over your collective destiny. So that students from this institution will distinguish themselves as you share notes and move forward together like a loyal and trained army. Resist. You must resist considerations of nationality, politics, and prejudice or material advancement. However, this does not mean that you should abandon your beliefs. It is essential that you must be consistent with your personal ethic, your cultural and religious beliefs. For by bringing this into your career and practice of medicine, you will make it a more diverse and rich in traditions and beliefs that your patients will appreciate. For it will make you a unique and sincere individual that your patients will recognize. And finally, I want to adumbrate the practice with conscience and dignity. Remember, this is not only public but private. It is for you at all times to practice and behave as if you are being driven by a belief larger than yourself. And that everything you say and do will reflect on who you are and what you believe. Like I suggested a while ago, today you must learn to challenge the tide of convention, stretch the boundaries of tradition, and violate the expectations of the norm. It calls for a different mindset. So as I conclude my brief remarks, because I do not want to break my promise tonight, I ask you today, as you don your white coat for the first time, reflect quietly about that first step you take after placing on your white coat and realize that this is the first step on a journey that will be exciting, frustrating, but will be the most fantastic journey you will ever take. And I welcome you to take your mental flight as you navigate uncharted waters. Fear is a natural process of development and achieving. And let me remind you, 
Like a mother eagle disturbed the feathery comfort of her nest to force the young eaglets into flying. Sometimes in life we are forced beyond our comfort zone to try our wings. And the thrill of flying always begins with the fear of falling. So as you get frustrated during your studies, do not give up. You are nearing the light. Doubt and confusion have questioned our very reason for being on this planet Earth. There are times when things get rough in your studies. You will ask yourself whether you're in the right place. But stay with the journey. Success and great things will be at hand. So that you can utilize the talents that you have to make a difference in your environment, to heal, to cure, and to care for your patients. Because trust me, it does not matter how long you practice medicine, you will at some point become a doctor who is a patient. Ladies and gentlemen, students, I entrust you to navigate the uncharted waters with confidence and competence. Good night and thank you very much. Uh, we just wanted to make a really quick apology to our guest of honor uh, because we forgot to mention uh, he had such an impressive resume. It was nice and <laughs> extensive. He's also the Minister of Aviation, if you didn't notice all the, the flight metaphors. So if you could join me again in thanking him for being our keynote speaker. So if we could give him one more round of applause. Okay, so as the first semester students have just donned their white coats and stethoscopes for the first time, it's always good to take the advice of those that preceded you. So please help me in welcoming a fourth semester student who has sat in the same seats that you, have, you are sitting in right now, Mr. Vince Chukukello, to shed his insight on being a medical student at IAU. I am a four semester student now, but almost a year ago today, I was sitting in the same seats you are now. Uh, I still remember, you know, the feeling of getting off the plane for the first time, you know, and looking around at the beautiful scenery, you know, and finally thinking, wow, you know, this is really happening. Like, I'm really here, I'm in medical school. You know, I remember arriving in my apartment for the first time with nothing but a, a, a digital card with $10 on it, and, uh, you know, a sheet of paper with a few numbers, and now I'm going, what do I do now? Um, and of course, the first day of school. Um, meeting, you know, your classmates for the first time, meeting professors. Um, for some of us, you know, seeing the school for the first time even. Uh, I remember all those feelings, they were both, uh, they were both fun, anxious, and kind of terrifying. You know, you didn't know what to expect at the time. But all in all, it is real. You are here, you are here, and um, you are now medical students. And you're starting your journey to what hopefully will be a long and successful career. Um, I wouldn't be where I am now if it wasn't for the advice that many of my, cla my uh, classmates that I've, are now um, moved on gave to me. So I'd like to give you a couple tidbits that hopefully can help you along the way. Um, first of all, just take a look you know, to your left and to your right and to all of the classmates sitting around you now. Um, this is your new family. Um, you're going to spend so much time with each other. So I, I definitely encourage you to get to know everybody in your class. Um, I use sort of verse. That's, that's what I love most about it, is that uh, everybody has such a unique story as to how they ended up here. Um, whether this was the first school that you applied to, um, whether you, um, you, know, you started down another road, but for some reason um, you ended up here. Um, the bottom line is we're all here now. We're all here to help. We're here to share knowledge. Uh, we're here to share our resources. Um, so you know, don't, don't ever hesitate to ask. Um, secondly, um, you know, a great way to get involved is to uh, join some of the uh, organizations that IU has to offer. Uh, part of the diversity has, uh, has led to us starting all kinds of different organizations. Um, Everybody is represented at the school, you know, whether you're Hindu, Christian, uh, you know, whether you're African or Canadian. Um, there's people like you out there and there's different organizations that, um, you know, that have people like you. Uh, so a great way to, to get to know people and to get started is to join the organizations. So I just really encourage you to, you know, to think about it, consider it, you know, it's a great way to break up the monotony of, you know, studying every day. Uh, I mean, you can learn some advice from, uh, from fellow students, um, you know, that way. Um, thirdly, you know, back to studying, which is what we're all here for. Uh, I encourage you to, to figure out the best, what works for you the best. Figure out how to study. And, you know, that sounds very simple now. I'm sure all of you have excelled in school um, your whole careers. Um, you know, you're used to having high marks, you're used to scoring very high. And hopefully that continues. But just to <laughs> warn you, um, med school is it's, it's a different situation you know you're in the big leagues now um, so you know you really have to figure out how to how to manage your time 
that's probably that's probably the biggest thing. It's, it's all about time management. Um, the program moves very quickly here. You know, we have 15 weeks on the island. We have six six tests every two weeks. You know, so your life is now divided into six week blo into two week blocks. You know, also, yes, we're here to study, but we we are blessed to be um, attending medical school on uh, a beautiful island of St. Lucia. You know, many people pick this place to come honeymoon, yet we get to live here. Um, so I, I, I definitely encourage you to try to make time to enjoy yourselves. Uh, you have 16 months on the island. The island has a lot to offer. Um, you know, it's okay to take a break every once in a while to clear your head and, you know, just to be human. Um, a lot of times people consider doctors as, as machines, you know, or as, as robots uh, reciting facts and things like that. But there is the human aspect of it, and part of that is enjoying yourself. Um, so that all goes back into time management. Um, make sure you get your studies done first. And when you are, um, when you are outside of the classroom, make sure you represent yourself um, as, as a medical student. Uh, people see you on the island and, you know, they're going to refer to you as doctor already. They'll see you in your white coat. They'll see you at Super J's. Um, just always carry yourself with class and dignity, no matter with, when you're inside the classroom or outside. And, um, of course, lead by example. Um, that's what we all, that's what we all have to do. Our professors do a great job at it. And so just, just remember what you're here for. But at the same time, it's okay to enjoy yourselves. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, honored guests faculty and staff. Um, as you can see, I'm not any better than uh, my classmates, but I was chosen. So they're, they're better than me, to be honest with you. Um, first of all, I was asked to do a motivation speak, some kind of, you know, something to recharge. We get weak sometimes. So what can I, what kind of words can I choose to uh, boost my classmate and myself? And the word success comes a lot. What is success? And we ask ourselves, what is success? And I put down to three points. How can we get success? Not only in medicine, but become a good citizens, good human beings. One, your purpose. What is your purpose? If you ask a fireman, what is your purpose of being a fireman? He would say, to fight fire, to help people. <laughs> if, you, if you ask an officer, what is, your, what is your duty? What is your job? What is your purpose? He, would, he or she would say, my purpose is to uphold the law, to help the citizens to fight crime. And if you ask IU professor, what is your purpose? He would say, or she would say, to give A's to all the students, right? <laughs> oh. <laughs> no. He or she would say, to uphill, to, uh, to help seek the students' knowledge, to give those who are seeking knowledge to be the best they can be. What is our purpose, dear students? Our purpose is simple, to become physicians. That purpose should last since today to the day you finish. You should never forget that purpose. Always remind it yourself. All these people who are here, your guests, your honors, your family, faculty members, they're here to support you. So don't forget that purpose. Secondly, patient. People say patient is virtue. I think it's more than that. Patient, we have to get, not only patient is having bad times, there's also good time. You got to be patient. That is, if you get an A, that doesn't mean you're going to stand back and say, I'm going to relax. No, be patient to get another A. And then also, being patient when you get hurt, down and out. They say the tongue is a dangerous spot. They have so many premolars teeth and all this canine tooth. Sometimes it goes to left to right, it gets bitten. <laughs> so that means the tongue will get hurt. But the tongue doesn't stop saying I'm done and helping the food process. It will go to my, it will say, okay. So you will fall. You will get scratches. You will get some bad tests, good tests. Bad times, good times. That doesn't mean you should stop. You should always succeed. You should remember your old goal is to get to the end mean. And that is to become a physician one day. And lastly but not least, determination. If I, was told, if I told you that behind this building there is a degree waiting for MD, your job is to go through the building, through these walls, without no sledgehammer. That means your determination should reach the, the horizon. You should never give up, no matter what. So you will have, forget she say or he say, or I don't like this professor. Your job is to succeed tomorrow. You only have few time in this island. So let's, let us make this uh, the best time we can. These three principles, let's, let us in, inherit and become one. Thank you very much. Yeah. All right, so as Hassan was saying, here at IAU, we are taught to strive for success and for excellence. And when excellence is achieved, it deserves to be recognized. So we would like to invite Dr. Nasser back for the presentation of the Dean's Awards right now. We have a few awards 
today. I would like to share it with you. Uh, first, Groove Award is going to be given to the hard-working staff. Again, I just would like to remind everyone, for the winner, congratulations. For those who is not going to receive the award, there is always next semester. There is <laughs> nobody should feel upset and resign and so on. For what? It's we just wish for those one who just go the extra mile to tell them, you know what? Thank you very much. You made the difference. And that's all. Nothing beside that. If you don't get it now, hey, always next semester. Take it as in your advance. You know, always we like to somebody to push us. And believe me, just a couple of days ago, one of the students came and said, Dr. Nasser, please push me a little bit more. I always stay with my father. My father always pushed me. And I was doing a great job. Nothing wrong at all. Nothing. So keep this award as a encouraging you. So there is nothing personally about it. It just is automatically calculated and no personal in it whatsoever. So the first Groove Award is going to be toward our staff. I would like to present this award as a small token of acknowledgement to the three staff. Number one, Mr. Diaz Henry. The next award to someone we always need in a difficult time. Computer is down, internet is down, hair is down. Who are you going to call? <laughs> None other than Danish. Please, Mr. Danish, come in. This person knows